TikTok. I saw this picture on Pinterest of these cherry glazed nails and I loved it so much so I decided to replicate that at home. So I'm going to do a nail extension using Builder Gel and then do a red polish with chrome on top. That's essentially what it is. And yeah, we're going to do our nails at home. I'm going to start off by pushing back the cuticle. And I personally use this drill bit right here. It's like a cylindrical one. If you're not comfortable using this, I would say use a cuticle pusher, a cuticle softener. You do want to make sure you're being careful when you're doing your nails at home because you don't want to cause an infection or anything like that. You don't want to trim away actual skin, only the cuticle. But if you have overgrown cuticle that has overgrown onto the nail plate and then you're applying product on top of that, that can cause lifting. So you want to make sure that you're pushing back the cuticles. Like I said, I use this drill bit here and holding it parallel to the nail. I start at the halfway point here and I go in one direction. This really just gets rid of the cuticle for me and then kind of go up the side of the nail. And then I switch the direction of the nail drill and then go in the other direction. So I do that for every single nail. You can also kind of use this to gently scuff the nail. I do have damaged nails right now because there have been a few instances where I peeled off nail sets that I've had a few times out of bad habit because there has been some lifting and then a few times because of a gel allergy like I, my fingers started itching so I ended up peeling the set that I had on off like I couldn't wait any longer when it comes to gel allergy something that I've learned is that it's usually user error so throughout the several years that I've been doing my nails at home a lot of the time I wasn't careful I would get gel on my skin and think I can just wipe it off or you know file it off later a lot of times it's uncured gel that comes into contact with your skin for a lot of people and overexposure to that over and over and over again can give people a gel allergy contact dermatitis so if you do do your nail if you do do if you that reminds me of the friends episode if you do your own nails at home don't get any gel on your skin and also make sure you have a really good lamp that can properly cure the gel i have this one right here it's from the brand sun uv and i bought it sometime last year i really like it when you stick your hand in it automatically lights up and it has a little countdown right here it has four different modes which i like it has a 10 second kind of like a flash cure 30 second 60 second and then a low heat mode as the time progresses it increases in intensity so it kind of avoids a heat spike so overall I think I got it for like under $50, maybe $30 on sale, I can't remember. But a really good lamp, so you want to make sure you have a good lamp that can properly cure your gel. And if you're using dark colors, like today I'm going to be using dark red, work in thin layers. So do a thin layer, cure it all the way, add another layer, cure it all the way, and then if you feel like you need a third layer, cure it all the way. Don't go in with a big glob because then it won't be cured underneath and that can give you a gel allergy as well. So I've learned it's not so much the brand, even though I avoid beetles, I just don't use any beetles at this point. I use D&D and this brand in hype as well as a few other builder gels you even hear of it at nail salons because a lot of times it can be because of improper usage. So be careful out there, but let's continue on to the nails. There are also a lot of really great videos you can find a lot online when it comes to cuticle prep. I am not a pro, but I really like this drill bit because it just makes this so easy. I went ahead and sprayed my nails with some isopropyl alcohol, get rid of the dust. And also this works as a dehydrator to get rid of any excess oils. I'm just gonna wipe it down with a lint-free wipe. I did already use that drill bit to go over the tops of my nail to get rid of that shine because once again, if your nails are too shiny and you don't buff them, then that can mess with longevity as well. So this is the last step for prep. This is a Young Nails protein bond. If I skip any of these prep steps, if I skip the protein bond, if I skip pushing back the cuticles, if I skip uh, dehydrating the nails or buffing the nail, then I won't get the longevity that I want, I've noticed. So all of these steps are very, very essential for me because product just does not last that long on me. So I have to take the time to prep properly. And this is an air dry formula. You don't have to cure it, but you want to make sure that you're not getting it on the skin. And because I'm going to be doing nail extensions, I'm going to need these nail forms here. I'm going to start off with a thumb. The thumb is the most damaged, both of them, because I have these divots in my thumbs. I don't know if you can tell. It's from press-on nails. I've researched into it, and I'm not the only one that has it, but every single time, without a doubt, when I try press-on nails, I end up getting this divot growing out. You can see this one's almost grown out, but it's like this divot in my nail. It's so frustrating, so I can't use press-on nails anymore. It's something to do with the matrix. Matrix is responsible for creating new cells for a new nail. No matter how I apply them, even if I don't apply it that close to the cuticle, press-on nails for whatever reason, I don't know if it's the tension or what, because my nail thumbs are a lot flatter, it just creates this divot in my nail every single time, without a doubt. I did a trial and error, and every single time it happens. So I had this happen to my friend as well, so I just avoid press-ons at this point, even though I love them so much for the past couple years. But anywho, applying your nail form, you wanna make sure that it is flush with your nail, so your natural nail is gonna be sitting on top of the nail form, like so. 
and then go ahead and kind of like secure the bottom and everything. Grab your base coat. This is a gel base coat and you're going to do a thin layer all across the natural nail. I start a little bit away from the cuticle and then kind of push the brush back so that way I'm not flooding the cuticle because if you have too much product in the cuticle it's going to be lumpy at the cuticle. Just do a thin layer and go ahead and fully cure this. I'm going to cure it under my nail lamp here for 60 seconds. I'm going to grab my builder gel. This one's in a pot and it's a lot thicker than like a builder gel in a bottle, builder in a bottle. It makes it easier to work with because it's not as runny. I have this brush set with all these different brushes and I'm going to use this one here. It's perfect for application. I'm going to grab a little bit of that builder gel and create a slip layer, which is a very thin layer. Again, I'm not going to start at the cuticle. I'm going to start in the middle of the nail and then kind of push that builder gel into the cuticle. That way I'm not flooding the cuticle and make sure not to flood the sides either, but I'm just creating a slip layer before I go in with some more builder gel. I'm gonna grab some more builder gel and create an extension. It's okay if your nail extension is not perfect, you are gonna shape it and file it down later. And I'm gonna grab some more builder gel and start working on building up the nail. Starting right here, I kind of create back and forth U-shaped motions kind of like rainbows, all the way to the tip. Just working on building up the nail, creating structure and a good apex. Okay, I'm just gonna grab a little bit more and create a bead down the center to kind of build up the apex. I'm gonna briefly flip my finger upside down to kind of self-level it before going in and curing this. And I'm gonna use the low heat mode so that I don't get a spike, heat spike. Once the nail is fully cured, you can go ahead and remove the nail form, take off the sides first and then kind of press downward and this does have a sticky layer so you're gonna have to get rid of it using isopropyl alcohol just spray it wipe it down before I go into the next steps I'm gonna repeat everything that I did for these nails here once you have your nail extensions you can go in and shape the nails to how you want as well as buff the surface to get rid of that shiny layer and I already did this hand so that's what that's gonna look like and you can leave them like this and just apply a gel top coat and cure the top coat but again I'm gonna be doing the red polish I've decided I'm gonna use this rubber base right here because it's a really dark red and that's kind of the look that I'm going for it's not technically gel polish it's a rubber base but this when it cures it adds so much structure to the nail and when you're doing dark colors you want to work in layers do a light layer cure it do another layer cure it and so on so forth it's one coat I'm gonna do another coat and I think that's it. To get the edges in the cuticle, I use a liner brush. That way you can be really precise and I just kind of dip it into the gel. And then also make sure that you're capping the free edge. Chrome powder has to be applied on top of a no wipe top coat, meaning when it's cured, it doesn't have that sticky layer that you have to wipe off. I already added a top coat and fully cured it. And then you just add the chrome powder on top, brush it on. This is not my favorite one because this one kind of has like a bluish, silverish, color to it but it's the only one that I have so that's the one that I'm using actually that looks really pretty but you're gonna add chrome powder to each nail on top of the top coat and then add another layer of top coat cure that and you're all done that's how you do chrome nails actually the next day I finished off that video and then I was looking at my nails at night and I wasn't crazy about it because it wasn't exactly the inspo pick the chrome powder made it too silvery and kind of took away from a lot of the red so what i ended up doing is taking that really dark red rubber base that i had and applying it on top i applied it on top of the top coat because i didn't want to file down but what i would recommend doing is after you apply the chrome powder apply red polish on top that way you get a lot more red and you still get that chrome like look so i prefer this so much more i feel like this looks a lot more like the inspo pick like it still looks red but it has like this mirrored like finish to it versus the first time that I did it with just the chrome powder. It was, I wasn't crazy about it. So I don't know, you can kind of play around with it and see what you like. But I'm so happy with how the nails came out. I think this is such a beautiful fall look. Really happy with it. Everything that I get is from Amazon. But I hope you guys enjoyed doing this nail look with me. I know I wasn't like too, a lot of times my camera would go in and out of focus and stuff. Just wanted to share some inspo for some fall nails. So thanks for hanging out and I hope to see you guys in future videos.